Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal with Crystal Thrift and Flips. What I do on this channel is basically transform different pieces of furniture, give them a makeover. So if you're interested, definitely subscribe, like this video, and let's get started. <music> In today's video, we're going to be working on this large dark brown dresser. It's in pretty nice condition. It's for a client, so it's a custom piece. All the colors, the knobs, and everything like that is already chosen. This is actually one out of three pieces that I did for this little boy's room, so let's get started. The first step is always to clean your piece. I'm using half water, half crud cutter, and even though this piece wasn't particularly that dirty, you still want to wipe down the piece no matter what because when you're sanding, there can be hidden oils and grease and you don't want that to get into any of your wood grain. In Florida, where I live, the weather has been so beautiful. It's been so nice. And so I've really been trying to take advantage of that because we know once summer hits, it is not gonna be like that. I was extremely curious to see what kind of wood grain we were going to have underneath this dark finish. It was really stubborn to take off, so I started off with an 80 grit sandpaper and then worked my way up to a 120 grit. My original plan was to stain the top of this dresser to match the nightstand, but as you can see later on in the video, I did change my mind. Again, I went in with that 80 grit sandpaper on all the spots that I was sanding down to that raw wood in order to stain it. And you can see I went in and only scuff sanded all the spots that I was gonna be painting and I used a 120 grit sandpaper for that. So I just got done scuff sanding the side of the stressor, but as you can see, as I zoom in closer, there's certain spots on the sides that did not come out with sanding, so I'm going to have to get out the wood filler to fix some of these spots right here. Okay, so here is the wood filler that I like to use. And I only like to use this on smaller holes just because on the larger ones, it tends not to work as well. Usually just apply it with my fingers. So while we wait for those few spots to dry, I'm gonna flip the dresser over and start sanding the front and the drawers. After removing the knobs on the top drawer, I used a screwdriver right here to prop it open so I could put a little pressure down while I was sanding it. I really was undecided on what I wanted to do with this dresser. I ended up sanding down the second drawer as well and some little detailed spots near the first drawer. And then I also was gonna wait to sand down the tops of the drawers until I flipped the dresser back over. So here was everything that I had sanded down to that raw wood to get ready to stain. I had the top two drawers these little detailed spots and the top of the piece and the bottom base. So this was just me brainstorming. I wasn't really entirely sure what I was gonna do yet, but everything that I might stain, I made sure to sand. For the final step in sanding, I grabbed my corner cat sander to get to the spots that my orbital sander couldn't reach. Next, I removed all of the knobs. You can tell that these were already changed out once. I'll show you right here. There's a little ring around the drawer where you can see where the previous knobs were at. Finally, it's time for my favorite part and that's to use my shop vac to vacuum up all of the sawdust that happened while sanding. It 
if you follow me on Instagram, this piece will definitely look a little familiar. It's because I did the exact same dresser in pink. I'll post a little clip of it right here for you guys to see. Um, I thought it turned out so adorable. But for this dresser, we're going to be making it match a desk and a nightstand that I already did. Um, I'll also post a little clip of the nightstand just so you can see the vibe that we're going for for this piece. Um, the color of the stain that we're going to be using is called Colonial Maple. And I did two coats of stain on all the spots that I had sanded down to raw wood. I don't know if it's just me or not, but my favorite part of flipping furniture is definitely staining wood. Comment down below what your favorite part is. time to paint our piece. I'm going in with the color Fathom Blue by Melange Paints. This is a, from their one line. It's an all-in-one furniture paint. No need to prime or seal. I am going to skip priming, but I am still going to seal the piece um, just because I like that extra protection on my furniture. And this is a matte finish. And so I personally don't like the feel of matte furniture. So I like to seal it with a satin finish poly honestly had forgotten how much I love this paint. I haven't used it in a while, but it just goes on so smooth and the coverage is incredible. And if you're curious on which brushes I use for this dresser, I use my chiseled wedge brush, my angle brush, and my round brush all from Zebra. The chiseled wedge brush is absolutely perfect, especially for spots like this on a dresser where you need a nice clean straight line on an edge. I wasn't entirely sure how this part of the dresser was going to look, having the inside of it painted like the base and the outside of it being that stained wood. But you know, that's the fun thing about furniture flipping is that you can just test out your creativity to see what looks good. And if you don't like it, you can always just change it. After my first coat of paint has dried, I go back in with a 220 grit sandpaper on all the spots that there is a little thicker spots of paint than I would like for that smooth finish. So I sand that down and then after my second coat of paint, I go in with my microfiber cloth before I seal the piece. I live with three cats so I absolutely cannot skip this step. We don't want any hair in our finish and I'm going in with this water-based poly and I'm going to do three coats of this for a nice smooth finish and that extra protection. I forgot to film me adding the new hardware, but that's definitely a step that I did. And I just wanted to post a little clip of the before of the dresser as well, just to remind you where we started. And here was the final result. I thought it turned out so nice. Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your feedback, what you do the same, what you would have done differently. Let me know, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for the next furniture flip.